Welcome to The Squeeze with Tony Pasquese and Frankie Bacalars. We are so happy to be joined by senior Jordan Matthews mm -hmm. of your 5-0 and o women's soccer team. Jordan, this is the second time you've made it onto The Squeeze, so thank you. It is, yeah. Thank you for having me. I can't believe it's been two years now since the last time I was on it. Yeah, it Probably has been. It has been two years and, and two pretty great years for yourself personally. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of goals that freshman season. Uh, last mm -hmm. year, obviously, the COVID shortened year. But now this season, five <laughs> and oh, the first time since 2008, I think. Uh, you've That's been a big crazy. part of that with, with four goals, five goals, three goals. Great. Three goals. Yeah. <laughs> Hattie Falkman's been taking that from you a yeah. little bit. And we talked about that yesterday, uh, Frankie and I, in the show. The scoring's been spread around quite quite a bit. Is that by design or, or what's going on there? Um, yeah, it's kind of by design. After Coach Rizzo came in, he really wanted to emphasize using our outside forward, um, which I thought was pretty honestly like a great idea um especially because 2019 it felt like there was a lot of pressure like on having me and Cass up top and you know it was kind of just on us for the most part so um I think it's a mix of just using the outside forward some more changing the formation and uh also I hear a lot in most games like mark 21 mark 21 so I'm pretty I'm known this year, this time, not like 2019, where I just kind of came in out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you came out of nowhere. You had double-digit goals, and hopefully you can do the same uh, this year yeah. in the MIAC. But like you said, you're not so much a secret weapon anymore. Uh, though This, this five-game win streak that you're on against non-conference opponents, not necessarily up to snuff, at least in my opinion, with some MIAC mm -hmm. teams. So, I mean, as a player, as a team, what can you take from this 5-0 and start to possibly parlay it into MIAC success? I think it's first, I think it's given us a confidence boost, which is something that we needed, especially with such like a fresh team this year. We have a lot of freshmen coming in there. We have a lot of depth now. Um, and I think we've kind of tried to use that to, our best of our abilities to get our passing a little bit better, um, you know, try to work on some things during those games. The competition wasn't as high as we might have needed, but um, I also think that it was a good opportunity for us to try to get some shots on goal, try to move the ball around a little bit more, connect more, um, and try to get to know how to play with each other a little bit more, especially since things moved around um, this year. But yeah, I, th I think there's definitely pros and cons to it. Um, Carlton will be a good first Mayak game, unlike last year where we played Thomas first and they were obviously a, a really good team. So I think that Carlton will be a good matchup and give us a chance to use things that we've been working on in our non-conference games. Yeah, kind of talking about like the transition from last year and kind of how things have changed. Um, you guys lost um, some seniors last year, especially your good friend, Mary Loy, who was a very significant scorer for the team in years past. So kind of what, what has changed with the team um, this year that obviously has worked since you guys are five and all, like what's, what's different that you've noticed with the team this year? Um, some differences I've noticed is our, like I said, our outside forwards, like Hattie, and we have a lot of depth out there. Um, we have Hattie and Kaylee and a um, bunch of those girls have really, I think, really improved and stepped up since like their freshman year. And last year was kind of a weird year. Um, so I think that we're using our outsides a lot more. I also think that we have a lot more speed this year. Um, and our back line has been trying to switch the ball around a lot more when in years past it was, you know, 2019, it was a kind of a launch the ball type of situation. We also had Mary Loy and Kendall and Quinny who are all I would say like pretty tricky players and they stood out in their own way. And so um, Cassie's kind of stepped into the role that Mary had with her own creativity, but um, she's a stronger presence and she sees the field a lot, not a lot more, but she sees the field in different ways. So she'll, you know, switch the ball around. And I think that's something that I've noticed we do a lot more is switching the field instead of just launching it overall. And so it kind of gives us more of like a technique, <laughs> like a technical yeah, that's some really that's some really great stuff. And you mentioned speed, which is a big part of of switching the field and and being able to to maintain possession of the ball. And and from one yeah. freshman phenom to another, Brooklyn McKinney, probably the quickest <laughs> girl out there when she is out there. What can you say about about her play so far this season? 
Brooklyn is awesome. She's so tricky. And from the very beginning, we joked because she's so small that, you know, these big Maya defenders or these non-conference defenders that we've played so far, you know, it's like they try to mark her and go in, you know, go in on her and then she'll switch up and they don't even realize that she's on the other side of their body. You know, she's really technical and quick and it's, it makes it a different type of asset on our team and different type of superpower you might say, cause she comes in and you just don't really know what to expect. And she, yeah, she's, she's definitely a really good player and it's nice to have that trickiness on the field. And she's also, I think she's one of our left footed players that we added this year, which also adds a different type of trickiness. Cause we had a lot of right footed. I think we only had one left footed player last year and now we have three or four. Yeah. Wow. Is being a left-footed player like a big commodity in soccer? This is just me genuinely asking. I, I know I'm not too well versed. It, it's like it's like a commodity in soccer to have. Yeah. People. I think most most defenders will assume that you know people's right foot is their dominant foot just because that's most most likely what happens. So you'll try to force it to their non-dominant foot. So when you play fresh players or teams, if you haven't scouted them or is, it isn't too noticeable, um, they'll try to force you on your left. And if you're good on your left, then that's just an ask that you have because, you know, you can take shots on your left. Like, I don't know if you've noticed Alicia uh, Jensen on our team too. She's left-footed and she has a really good left foot on her. So um, that's just kind of like a nice asset to have when teams are forcing you. <laughs> they don't really expect it sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, so Alicia Jensen, Brooklyn McKinney, you mentioned that there are a couple others. Who are those other left-footed players? Um, well, we have Kaylee Manglitz. We were talking about it at the game yesterday. Um, I think her name, uh, Savannah, is another freshman. She's out right now because of injury, but she's uh, outside back, and she is also left-footed. So when she goes in and when she recovers, um, she'll be on her left side and playing left-footed left -footed balls in, too. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, no, you're getting to know the freshmen just like we are, but uh, a nice team bonding experience. You got to spend the weekend in Wisconsin. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. Uh, but you played against Marion. You beat them. Shut out. Mm -hmm. You played against Rippin. You beat them. Shut out. Pretty awesome. Yep. How was that trip? Oh, it was really fun. Um, I would say our first game, we kind of start off a little hectic because we don't necessarily like know how to start off yet I think I think we're still kind of getting the hang of like uh relaxing in the beginning and realizing we don't have to panic so much um but once we got the hang of things it, it was both games were really fun because we got a lot of people on the board we got to try out a lot of different types of types of plays and got to try out different like techniques that we wanted to use and stuff um, and it was, it's just been good to bond with the freshmen, especially because they make up almost half of our team this year. Um, and it's nice to see them get on the field because we have so much depth and they're all really good players. There's not one of them that like, you know, I don't think that I think they'll all step up basically is what I'm trying to say. And I think that they all have a lot of different skills that they will bring to the team over the next few years too. Um, and then when you put them on the field, I mean, they all show up, they all work really hard. And so it's nice to have that type of depth and learn and see more about them. Yeah. When you guys get into to conference play here, are you, are you expecting to still see so much rotation in the lineup and those young, young gals getting in, or do you kind of expect it to diminish a little bit more and kind of keep the same 11 on the field? Um, I think Rizzo will definitely sub more than Neil ever did. Neil kind of liked to stay consistent with the same players on the field. But um, at times that, you know, I don't know if you remember how many times we lost in overtime mm. in or double overtime in 2019. And that was because we continuously just kept the same players on the field and cycle out and you would get tired or, you know, uh, ran into the ground kind of in a sense. So I think Rizzo, um, he's already talked about how he's going to, sub those players sub some players on to keep fresh legs going and stuff I don't think it'll be as much as non-conference um just because the Mayak is a different type of level and it you know and we need consistency on the field but um he's definitely going to use our depth to his advantage and sub some people out in the last 10-15 minutes 
give our legs a break and then go back in again. And it'll vary for sure, depending on, you know, if we're winning by, by like a little bit, or if it's like a really tight game, I think it'll definitely depend. But I just, I do like that he's going to use a lot more of our depth and get some fresh legs in there, throw the other teams off a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great to hear that he's got a malleable plan. It's always nice when coaches are flexible like that and they can kind of mm-hmm. bury the ego and, and change it up a little. That's awesome to hear. Uh, one of those overtime losses, it was actually a tie against Carlton back in 2019, you scored the lone goal. So hopefully some subs getting <laughs> in there will, will have a W next to your name against Yeah. Carlton. That game's on Tuesday, actually, right? Tomorrow. Yeah, it is on Tuesday. Yeah. It feels like we just got, we literally just got back you know, last night from Madison or from Wisconsin that we turn around and go back. But it's actually kind of nice to have that momentum going forward with, you know, five wins on our belt. It's, it's a confidence boost for sure. And I think we're going into the game, you know, knowing that we have the skill to win these games and that, you know, as long as we put our mind to it, we can, we can, find a lot of success this season but yeah I was talking to my teammates about that game the other day or that goal I scored on Carlton and it was the most bizarre goal I think I've ever scored in my life like I was my back was to the goal it was on a free kick and I kicked it backwards Mm. it went into the top left corner but I didn't even look at the goal one time (laughs) and yeah that's how you should shoot shoot all your goals like that (laughs) I know I'm like wow that went in it was funny. Uh, Hattie's goal against Rippin, her first one, she she crossed it and she didn't realize it was going towards the goal. She meant to cross it back and it just went in and she like looked at me like it was major confusion. She's like, did that just go in? And I'm like, yeah, it did. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Look at that. You've been making it look so easy. It's like you're not even trying to score uh, no. <laughs> this season on, on that uh, soccer team. But uh, one more question before we get to the really important stuff, which is the smooth oh, yeah. team, of course. Uh, <laughs> you had 10 shots against Co College and you didn't score. What does that type of game do to you mentally, if it does anything at all? Yeah, it was definitely a mental battle. And I kind of noticed that in 20, uh, 2020 last year, even though it was a shortened season, um, I kind of just got in my head too much. I think just like 2019, I didn't really think at all, which sounds bad, but I didn't. I just kind of went for it. And I think in that game, I was so in my head that I needed to score that I, I just couldn't get it in. I couldn't place it as well. Um, and so I actually talked to a coach Rizzo after that, and he showed me a clip of Kobe in in one of the it was a big big game I can't remember exactly what game it was but he kept airballing it and he was like great player and you know obviously it's Kobe um and he he was talking about how he got past that mental battle and how he wasn't thinking of it as failure just as a way to get forward so you know I just I just think I was in my head a little too much and I tried to think of it as like at least I took those shots on goal and I kept shooting even though I didn't make any. And then I got them against Martin Luther, which boosted my confidence a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they, they came quick in that game. So hopefully that success continues into my yeah. play. Uh, but as I said, I really hope that you, uh, you know, you're going to take this seriously and really train as the kicker punter for the smooth football <laughs> They're, oh yeah they're relying on you uh how did it feel to be selected to that uh you know that honor oh I was pumped I was on the bus and I was like let's go I got this <laughs> you it, know I was like it's gonna, be, I was, it's gonna be better than any all my ex selection you've gotten oh yeah oh team. yeah no that was honestly the best like best thing I've ever gotten best thing I've seen I was like yeah I'm gonna take this seriously Sorry, Rizzo. I gotta go train to be the kicker <laughs> for for this move football team. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, ten and zero in the conference, uh, Mayak champs. It's gonna be it's gonna be special. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I wish then, it could be like. I wish we could play like actual games. You know, like I actually know. make <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna be awesome. Yeah, Frankie, the left tackle. You're gonna be blocking for Jordan, so you know this. You gotta, you gotta. Yeah, really you gotta start. I, can, I can just feel the CTE creeping in already. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but we joked before the interview even started, this is Jordan's second time on the squeeze. And she asked, where are the t-shirts? Which is a perfect yeah. question. Uh, we mentioned it on the broadcast. I'm saying it here again. We are going to have new t-shirts. Very excited. I don't know when, uh, probably within the, the end of the month. Um, but, you know, thanks for all the support. I know you're a proud wearer of your squeeze t-shirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Liam, Liam Boyle. I don't know if I'm, uh, I wear it as much as Liam Boyle does, but I definitely, I definitely try to wear it wear it as much as I can and you'll see it you'll see me wearing it in the rack a lot <laughs> perfect and I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to see you and every other smooth athlete that's been on the show in the new squeeze <laughs> uh, and then one last question I've asked pretty much everybody you know, how is this team going to be how, how do you think you're going to finish in conference I think that we're the best we have been I want to say ever but I don't know I, since I've been here and even since Mary and everyone is here and I really wish like I wish that they could still be a part of it because they're you know there are some of my best friends and I I even said it the other day I was like you know I wish Quinny and Kendall and Mary and Amanda I wish they were all here um, to be a part of it but I think that we're the best team we have been and I think that we're definitely in the running like we we are definitely in the playoff running for sure like we haven't started my games yet but just judging by our, the talent we have on our team this year and our work rate and just the way that um, the way that we've been doing things in games and stuff, I can see us going to the playoffs this year for the first time ever, I think, right? The first time ever. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. Time Which ever. would be pretty cool. And I, you know, it, that's a big goal of mine is just like before I graduate from St. Mary's, got to go to playoffs, got to go to the tournament, got to do all of that. Yeah, well, hey, that, that sounds good to me. Frankie, does that sound good to you? Sounds great to me. Yeah, <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep it up, and hopefully we have a, a playoff team on, on the men's side and definitely the women's side. Uh, oh, yeah. Jordan Matthews. But thank you so much. This has been absolutely great. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm glad that you invited me back on it. I guess I did a decent job in 2019 to be invited again, <laughs> so I appreciate it. For sure. Thanks, Jordan. Mm -hmm.